Today's video is brought to you by Mantis Sleep. Our friends over at Mantis Sleep are giving you guys 10% off your purchase when using promo code JKBOGAN. If you don't know what the heck that is, they make great sleep masks. If you're having a hard time sleeping, you should definitely entertain grabbing one. They have plenty. They have one that connects to your phone. They have one made of silk. They have a regular pro one. They have one that's weighted. They have all sorts of them. You can check it out on the Mantis Sleep website. And once again, don't forget to use promo code JKBogan and get your 10% off. Now back to the show. All right, we're back. We're doing it again. We, you know, I've had people tell me they like this. And so I'm just going to keep at it. It is the what if mini series on this channel. And we are talking about a worst case scenario, in my opinion. What if Matthew Stafford retires after this season? Before we dive into it, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Also, be sure to follow me on all social media at JK Bogan. And uh, let's get into it. So, Matthew Stafford, what if? What if he retires? I mean, it's certainly possible, right? I, I, I won't rule it out. I definitely won't rule it out. As sad as it is to even think about. Now, understand this. I've done a lot of research on this front, but things change. I don't think people thought that Aaron Rodgers wasn't going to finish his career with the Packers. I don't think people thought that. I mean, I definitely don't think people thought back in the day Drew Brees was going to leave the Chargers and go to the Saints. I don't think people thought Matthew Stafford would go to the Rams. That was probably more wishful thinking on my part. I don't think people thought that Deshaun Watson would end up with the Cleveland Browns. I definitely don't think people were thinking while Tom Brady was playing for the New England Patriots and winning Super Bowls, he was about, what, three, four years away from being a Tampa Bay Buccaneer and winning a Super Bowl in Tampa Bay. This is the NFL. When you think you know everything, you don't. Nothing changes the landscape in the NFL because the fact is the landscape is always changing. Not one person is going to put you over the top. So with that said, when you're talking about the quarterback, that's about as close as it gets to one person putting you over the top or crushing you. And that is the case with Matthew Stafford. If Matthew Stafford this year with a Rams team that I think is good enough to go far in the playoffs, if he were to show up <clears throat> and for whatever reason this year, he just doesn't have it. It's not there. Arm strength is gone. You know, confidence is shot. He's overthrowing targets. He's throwing more interceptions than touchdowns then maybe he retires right after the season. And if that's the case, maybe you're happy he retires right after the season. What if the other thing? What if he's so content on the season, the Rams, they win the Super Bowl, and then poof, Matthew Stafford pulls in Andrew Whitworth and decides to retire on top. No one can beat you. You won two Super Bowls, and you get to retire right after winning. Your last game will forever be known as the game that you won at all. No one can take that away from you. So either way, either of those scenarios, say Matthew Stafford retires in 2025. Where does that leave the Rams? What if that happens? I think it's fair to bring up because we don't know the future. Personally, I think he plays another three to five years. There are people that think he's done after this year. Who knows? I don't know. Lord only knows. So with that said, here are the options. And we'll go, we'll go through each one. I did a lot of research on this because I want to see who would be available technically. In-house, Stetson Bennett. Now, understand when I say in-house, I'm talking about somebody who's signed to the roster beyond this year and is somebody that could be considered I'm not saying I'd be jumping for joy if Stetson Bennett replaced Matthew Stafford next year. I'm just saying I could stomach. Well, I don't want to put this. I could see Stetson Bennett starting in an NFL game over somebody like Dresser Wynn. I just, I'm sorry. I'm sure he's a nice guy. I'm not trying to hate. I just can't see Dresser Wynn starting for the Rams. So that's why the only in house option is Stetson Bennett. So then you have the NFL draft options from 2024. So we don't know what direction the Rams went in in this scenario. We, we don't know. They could have drafted Michael Penix Jr. If Stafford retires in 2025, 
I'd have a good idea. I'd have an idea, or at least I'd have to believe an idea that the Rams had a pretty good idea that he was going to retire. That was a lot of ideas. Anyway, Michael Penix Jr., do they draft him? Do they draft Bo Nix? Do they draft Spencer Rattler, Michael Pratt, Jordan Travis? Guess what? Those are the only options in this 2024 class that I could see being legitimate options. And I'm not saying I think they draft a quarterback, but if they were to draft any quarterback at all, I think it would be those five and maybe Devin Leary because of the connection um, with Liam Cohen at Kentucky, but that might be pushing it. So those are the only five quarterbacks that I see the Rams even considering. They're not going to trade up for JJ McCarthy. They're not going to trade up for Michael Penix Jr., Caleb Williams, Jane Daniels. Those are the only five. Okay. So let's just say they don't draft any of those guys. Well, we would start because the draft in 2025 would obviously happen after retirement, but what would come first before retirement is the free agency market. Now, currently the way it stands in 2025, Dak Prescott would be a free agent. Doesn't look like he's signing with Dallas a long-term deal. Now he could sign with Dallas in the end, but right now it does not appear that he is going to sign an extension anytime soon with the Dallas Cowboys. They are not in agreement on a contract. They're not anywhere near close. And so there's a chance that Dak Prescott could be available in free agency. Now I understand what some people would say. Dak has never won anything of note. Dak choked in the playoffs. Dak is in the same quarterback, whatever. I'll say this, if Matthew Stafford retires next year, the whole what if thing you have to understand here, the Rams might not have a choice like Dak Prescott. If they want to continue winning, if they want to continue playing at a high level, that might be your best option. But this is where it gets interesting because the Rams have a chance to do something that is so bizarre that has been done before in the NFL and has definitely been done before in the MLB. Um, and that is trade a player away and then sign them back. Jerry Goff reunion. Now I know a lot of you just lit up because a lot of you like Jerry Goff personally for me. I like him. I don't need him back. I do not, but who knows? Stranger things have all, you know, stranger things have happened. When you look at this scenario, the Rams wouldn't be in a position to play preferential, okay? They would probably have to figure out who would be their quarterback pretty quickly because you have the free agency right then and there. If you don't do anything, then you have maybe the trade market. We'll get into that. And then you have, of course, the draft. And let's say, you know, you win the Super Bowl. I'm not complaining if Stafford, you know, if they win another Super Bowl this year, no one's complaining Stafford retired, but at the same time, they win another Super Bowl, they're picking 32nd, okay? So if they're picking 32nd, they're not going to be able to get a franchise quarterback without trading all the way up unprecedentedly. Because uh, And also another thing, if you have the number one overall pick, you're not trading down to 32. That's just too far. So anyway, getting a little sidetracked here, but you get the point. Dak Prescott, Jared Goff. Are the Lions going to bring him back? Probably, but... It's worth mentioning that right now, if the season ended today, he'd be a free agent. Trey Lance. See, we've talked about this, okay? We've talked about this draft class, Trey Lance, Zach Wilson, Justin Fields. We have. On this channel, I've talked about a Zach Wilson trade. I could totally see the Rams liking one of those three guys. Trey Lance is not going to get his fifth-year option picked up by Dallas. He is going to be a free agent, guaranteed. But are you going to pick up Trey Lance to be your starter? Probably not. You're going to pick him up to try to develop him. You pick him up if you're trying to create a competition-based quarterback room. Not an established quarterback, but you're trying to find your quarterback via competition. That's what you would do. Zach Wilson... Same thing, except Zach Wilson actually has playing experience in games that Trey Lance really doesn't have. Trey Lance has experience playing in games. He's played in games before, 
but Zach Wilson has started for teams. Like he started for the Jets two years in a row. May not have been by design, but he did. So Justin Fields is interesting because, again, fifth-year option. We know the Jets aren't going to pick up Zach Wilson's fifth-year option. We know the Cowboys aren't going to pick up Trey Lance's. But we don't know if the Steelers are going to pick up Justin Fields. And I'll tell you right now, I think the Steelers should because I think Justin Fields is going to win that job over Russell Wilson in camp. And I think that value getting him on that fifth-year option is going to make him so affordable in a world where being a quarterback that you have to pay, like you're going to be paying a premium for any quarterback nowadays. Like I, I I've mentioned on this channel uh, before I mentioned on my NFL channel, Daniel Jones makes over $40 million. So you have to understand it's a tough market. Fifth year option will make a lot of sense for the Steelers, but if they don't go that route, Justin Fields, I think could be the starting quarterback for the Rams. The other one, I mentioned Russell Wilson. This would be a Band-Aid bridge quarterback move. Would the Rams go in a bridge quarterback direction? Maybe, maybe not, but he's an option there. And then last but not least, former Ram, who's currently a Ram, who's never played for the Rams, but would be a former Ram in this scenario, being in 2025, Jimmy Garoppolo. And now this is really intriguing because if... Matthew Stafford gets hurt or has a really bad year in 2024 and retires in 2025, which hope to God that doesn't happen. It would break my heart. I love Stafford. If that did happen, do the Rams do well without him and with Jimmy Garoppolo? Because if they did well, Jimmy Garoppolo and, you know, Stafford retiring, Garoppolo could be that option. It sounds weird, but having Puka Nakua and Cooper Cup and Kyron Williams, he'd have a lot of weapons. He'd have a really good offensive line, one of the best in football. Jimmy Garoppolo could thrive. I mean, I think most quarterbacks could thrive behind what the Rams have. So maybe it's not even that huge of a deal, but it's worth mentioning. Keep in mind, he's not super old either. Uh, he's not super young either. He's 32. So you wouldn't have him for that much longer, but he'd be a nice bridge option. Same thing with Russell Wilson, or let's just call it like it is. Geno Smith you know, late bloomer there, but Garoppolo has already proven more than Gino. And, you know, it, you could have him maybe have a Gino moment. Um, so we talked about free agents in 2025. We talked about draft options in 2024, by the way, if the Rams draft any quarterback, I think it's Jordan Travis. I'm just saying, cause I don't think they would draft a quarterback super high. Jordan Travis would be drafted to compete against Stetson Bennett for that job. Simply put, um, or he wouldn't compete at all and he would just be redshirted. So there's also the chance there. So then you go to the NFL trade options. Okay. This is interesting. Okay. Because Kirk cousins tops this list. It's not easy to come up with trade options. A lot of guys and I went through and it's like, Hey, could Justin Herbert be a possibility? No, it's going to be really hard to trade a lot of these quarterbacks. They're, you know, a lot of guarantees and things like that. So, Kirk Cousins. The Falcons would have to be an absolute disastrous train wreck for Kirk Cousins to be available. But if he was available and they were a disastrous train wreck, this would be a one-year thing, okay? You're not picking up Kirk Cousins to be god-awful. You're picking up Kirk Cousins to try and win a Super Bowl. And I think the Falcons are going to surprise some teams. Okay. I think they're going to be really good this year. And Kirk cousins is a big reason why, where he gets to play. I, I love the fit personally, but if Kirk cousins was available, I think he'd be number one on the list because I think Sean McVay already having that familiarity, working with him, not just being around him, like literally working with him, being the offensive coordinator for Kirk cousins back in Washington. Uh, I think that that relationship would still be there. I think it would work well. And again, this is a last ditch pivot effort because you're like, oh crap, Matthew Stafford retired. We have to replace him. Kirk Cousins would probably be the best option of the trade options. But wait, there's more. See, I don't see this happening. I actually think Will Levis is going to make things happen and with the Titans. I think he'll be pretty good. But if Will Levis just, he, even if he is good and Brian Callahan just says, I want my own quarterback. Okay. Will Levis gets the boot, the Rams could trade for Will Levis. 
that would be interesting because they had a chance to draft him. And I actually think they were not, and a lot of NFL teams were not ready to watch him go into the second round. I think everyone assumed he was going to be a first round talent. I think there were teams that maybe like the Rams that didn't do maybe the, the research that they would have the work that they would have on Levis. If they really felt like he would have been there, um, you know, so that explains why Stetson Bennett was so high on their board. I think they picked Steve Avila anyway, but if they, you know, were, were aware that Will Levis was going to fall into their lap, you know, in the, or potentially closer to their lap in, in the second round, I think they might have been aggressive and traded up, um, you know, potentially, who knows. But Will Levis is an option, and he's got all the tools you want a quarterback to build. He's kind of built like Josh Allen. Uh, if I'm being honest, so kind of no, more modern quarterback. Then you got Baker Mayfield reunion with Baker. I mean, if Tampa it doesn't work out there, they have a lot of guys to pay. They still got to pay Tristan Wirfs. Um, they have to pay Antoine Winfield Jr. They just tagged him after all. They got to pay him long term. So there's a lot to do there. They they have to sign some guys. So with that said, Baker Mayfield, who they brought in, you know, they brought back. Maybe they trade him, you know, if it doesn't work out, could be an option. And then last but not least, Kenny Pickett. I know what you're thinking. Kenny Pickett couldn't even crack it with the Steelers. What makes you think he'd be an option? Well, Kenny Pickett is not starting over Justin, or sorry. Kenny Pickett is not starting over Jalen Hurts, okay? He's just not. But I like Pickett, and I think he's got some things that you just can't coach and you can't teach. You either have it or you don't. He's got that it factor. If you watch him late in the fourth quarter, actually do yourself a favor. I mean, it's probably torturing yourself, but if you don't believe in Kenny Pickett, if you think he's just a fraud or whatever, go back and watch him against the Rams in the fourth quarter. He was outstanding. And the thing is, he has a pattern of doing this. In the fourth quarter, he really buckles down and does the right things. And you can't on one hand say, Kenny Pickett's bad, and then on the other say, wow, the Steelers' offensive Uh, coordinator was terrible. The play calling was terrible. The offensive line wasn't good enough. The receivers weren't good enough, but then say Kenny Pickett was the problem. Like at some point or another, you have to admit that both can coexist. And so I actually wouldn't be surprised if the Rams ended up trading for Kenny Pickett uh, after this season, if this scenario came up and then you have Kenny Pickett battling Zach Wilson in camp. And now maybe you have your franchise quarterback. Maybe you don't keep in mind Mike Garofalo's report that we already talked about, right? We talked about it. Sam Howell was a quarterback that they really wanted. And to me, if they really wanted him, that looks more towards the future, I think. So maybe they are interested in that type of guy. And the closest thing, in my opinion, to a guy like that is Zach Wilson. So Kenny Pickett's a little bit different of a quarterback, but I like Pickett. I like all the options I've listed Maybe there's some that I don't like as much as others, but that's still that. And then last but not least here, NFL Draft 2025 options. So I have gone through and I listed every single option in this upcoming draft. And I'll say this, okay? I think this 2024 quarterback class is overrated. I've said it from day one. I mean, it's just nonstop. Like, this guy's going to go in the first round, and this guy's going to go in the first round. This There's not anything special about anybody in this draft except for the mobility of Jaden Daniels and Caleb Williams' improvisational skills. That's about it. That's really about it. I mean, his arm talent and everything. It's Caleb Williams and and Jaden Daniels. Uh, Drake may have some things I really do like. Um, I wouldn't call him special, right? That said, maybe there's nobody special in the upcoming draft, but you have Shadur Sanders. Another year at Colorado, what does he do? Quinn Ewers at Texas, Drew Alar at Penn State, Carson Beck is probably the best Georgia quarterback that they've had in the last few years. I mean, I know they had Justin Fields, but I have a I have an interesting feeling about Justin. uh, Excuse me, I have an interesting feeling about Carson Beck. I do. Riley Leonard from Notre Dame, I'm not as high on, but I list him anyway. Jalen Milrow, Alabama. Uh, looked like a college quarterback, and then I thought I saw some NFL traits that could translate uh, down the stretch this year in big games. Cameron Ward, Miami, if you guys have been following my draft content, 
I have been a fan of Cameron Ward for a while now. Was at Washington State. He transferred to Miami. We'll see what ends up happening. Jalen Daniels, Kansas. I've mentioned him over and over again as an option. Uh, Brady Cook, Mizzou. Will Howard, Ohio State. Dylan Gabriel, Oregon. Connor Wigman, uh, Texas A&M. Graham Mertz, Florida. And DJ Ugalele, uh, Florida State. Now, are all those guys options necessarily to be a starter? Not quite. But what you could see, the Rams drafting a quarterback next year's draft Say they go out and get a guy like, I don't know, they get Jalen Daniels in the second round, okay? So you get Jalen Daniels in the second round, and in turn, you end up signing Trey Lance or Zach Wilson or Justin Fields, and you have them go at it and win or take all, essentially. I could see the Rams going that route. I think the ultimate thing is what if, in this case, what if Matthew Stafford retires next year? This is the one question where you can name All of these names, but at the end of the day, there is no prediction to be made, folks. We do not know. We don't know. Would Jared Goff be open to a reunion? Would Sean McVay want Jared Goff back? If it, you know, you go up against the wall, maybe. Would they want Dak Prescott? Would they want Trey Lance, Zach Wilson, Justin Fields, Jimmy Garoppolo, Russell Wilson? Would they trade for a Kenny Pickett, Baker Mayfield, Will Levis, or Kirk Cousins? We just don't know. And it goes back to my initial point early, early on in this video. We didn't know that Tom Brady, you know, when he was winning a Super Bowl against, you know, the Falcons, not long after would end up being on the Buccaneers, right? We, we didn't know that. We, we, we didn't know that Matthew Stafford, when we're watching him getting crushed in, in Detroit, would eventually win a Super Bowl with the Rams, Right. You don't know until it happens. And there are guys right now that I listed that might not even come close to being options because the thing will play itself out. Maybe Justin Fields is now the franchise quarterback for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Maybe Trey Lance ends up being the successor to Dak Prescott in Dallas and ends up being really good. Maybe Jared Goff ends up staying with the Lions or he goes somewhere else. Maybe Trey Lance you know, doesn't work out. Maybe Zach Wilson gets traded somewhere and he does. Maybe Dak Prescott decides to hang it up super early. I don't know. Like you just, you don't know. Maybe Kirk Cousins retires. Like there are guys probably not listed on here that are going to be options that are probably better options than these guys. The future cannot really be predicted. You can do projections, but getting things right is just, it's not going to be likely. So Look, I'll say this. If Matthew Stafford retired after this year, it would suck. At the same time, you have to trust Lesney and Sean McVay. You have to trust the talent evaluators that are in the Rams building. I haven't loved what they do at quarterback, but I do have confidence that if they were put in that position, they would get the right signal caller for the team and they'd move on. So that's all I got for you guys. Now, If you're curious or, you know, not if you're curious, if you have any idea on, I don't know, where they end up going, say, you you know, you're just, you can read the future. I don't know. Not hating on it. I respect it. Put it in the comments section. Who are the Rams going to end up starting if this scenario turns out? If Matthew Stafford retires in 2025, who is the Rams starting quarterback? That's the question. Drop in the comment section below. Be sure to hit the thumbs up button, the bell icon, the subscribe button, and follow me on all social media at JK Bogan. I will see you guys soon. I hope you guys enjoyed this another hypothetical what if video that apparently you guys have really been liking. So I'll keep churning them out in addition to the regular content. Take care, folks. Later. Do you love talking about the Rams, the NFL, or just want to be a part of a community? Join my free Discord server today. We're over 800 members. We got 24-7 live chat, a level 3 boosted server, the ability to call into JE Live, playing online games with us on kick streams, toggleable alerts for when I go live on YouTube or kick so you don't miss a live stream, and exclusive giveaways. Click the link in the description, the comments section, or the link that comes up in the video to learn more and join today.